Hi, welcome to Algebra 2, Lesson 1-3, Piecewise Defined Functions. In this lesson, we'll be able to graph and interpret piecewise defined functions. So let's start with model and discuss. The key vocabulary would be piecewise defined function and step function. A music teacher needs to buy guitar strings for her class. At store A, the guitar strings cost $6 each. At store B, the guitar strings are $20 for a pack of four. So every guitar string in store A would be $6 each. And then here you have a pack um, at store B for $20. But uh, and we know that it's a pack of four, so you can do a little bit of math to figure out how much it costs for one string. Five dollars, right? So it is, it is cheaper to buy a pack in, at store B um, compared to buying one string at, at store A if we're just thinking about one string. But um, one, one str uh, the cost per one string. But we're not only... Uh, thinking about one string because there may be instances where you want to buy a bulk then maybe it's cheaper to buy guitar strings at, at a bulk or if you just need one then maybe you just need to buy one no option but let's think about this situation and start answering some questions um, part A, make graphs that show the income each store receives if the teacher needs 1 to 20 guitar strings. We don't know how many the teacher would need, but we know she'll need 1 to 20 guitar strings, right? We can make a graph using technology. So let's use desmos.com slash graphing or a slash uh, calculator to find. Oh, where'd it go? Okay, so in order to make the graph, we want to write an equation for a guitar string um, so at store A. You would represent Y as the cost and X as the number of guitar strings. So six per guitar string and then your um, store B would be would be a different graph um, you might not be able to come up with um, an equation right away but let's graph let's graph um, the first one so every If you buy one, so y equals six x. This is technically your graph, but it doesn't include all the points between zero and one here because you can't buy uh, a fraction of a string, right? So it has to be exactly, exactly one. So let's adjust our table. Um, your x x axis could be from zero to ten, and then y axis could be from zero to maybe like thirty. Okay, and now we have a graph that looks like this. So here, this point. 1 comma 6 and 2 comma 12 and so on. So we want to find each points actually individually. So 1 comma 6 would be the graph that we actually want. 2 comma um, 12 and then 3 comma 18 and so on. Okay, so this would be, and then 6 times 4 is 24. This would be our first store. Your second store, though, I'm going to use another tab. 
Your second store uh, will be a pack. So you have to buy, you have to buy a pack of four. So you have to have four strings, right? So if we have the same x and y variables that represent the same thing. Hmm. I wonder why not. Why it's not working? Um, let me let me use the same graph. Okay, then your first your first point should actually be four, comma twenty, right? So this is your first point for your your pack, and then your next point would be eight strings because you buy two packs. And that's going to be $40. And that's already here. Right? So then, if you just buy one pack, though, one, st one string, then you still have to buy the pack. So it's going to cost you $20, right? And then if you buy two strings, it's still $20 because you have to buy the pack. And so it's the same thing. But notice that your line is straight here. And then, and then once you want to buy five sp strings, then you have to buy two packs. So you have to pay 40. And do you see the big jump from here to here? Yeah. So these are the two graphs that we want to graph. If the x if the variables x and y represent the same things, then our two graphs are going to look very different. The first one may look like a line, a, a line, but the second one, you have multiple lines that jump, right? So this is a situation where it's very odd. Let's look at, um, let's look at part A and try to graph part A. So hmm, where could I graph? Let's graph it here. So in part A, your store A will have x variables number of strings. And then y variable income or dollars or you can say cost there you go and then so from zero you buy one string and it's going to be six dollars you buy two strings it's twelve dollars you buy three strings it's $18 and so on, right? So it increases by six, okay? And then store B, you'll have um, steps. So they're representing the same things. Um, and if you buy, if you want to buy one string, you still have to buy a pack. So it will cost you $20 if you want to buy one string, right? If you want to buy two strings, you still need to buy a pack. Three strings, buy a pack. Four strings, buy a pack. But once it gets to five strings, then um, you need to buy two packs. Then your price jumps from 20 to 40, right? So if you go to store B, then you have no option. If you need six strings, then you need to buy two packs as well, seven, eight. And then once you need nine, then your price jumps again by 20, and you need to buy three packs, which will cost you $60, and then so on. You see that? So the graphs are going to be very different between these two stores. Let's look at part B. Describe the shape of the graph for store A. 
Describe the shape of the graph for store B. Why are the graphs different? Okay, so why are they different? Let's first describe the shape. Okay, so the first... Let's, let's write part B here. So the graph of store A is a straight line, right? And then the graph from the graph for store B is like a step, right? It, it jumps between flat sections. And they're different because store B sells in packages not by strings right that is why we have these um, this odd graph like so store B sells in packages not individually like store A okay so that's why we have a different graph let's look at part C Compare the graphs for stores A and B. For what numbers of guitar strings is it cheaper to buy from store B? Explain how you know. So what numbers of guitar strings is it cheaper? If we know that the teacher needs 1 to 20 guitar strings, right? So we need to compare each number. So if you want 1, then it's cheaper to buy at store A. If you want two, it's still cheaper. So we want to find where the string number of strings um, become more expensive, right? So um, store A, it's cheaper for one, two, three, right? Um, because it's going to be six dollars, twelve dollars, or eighteen dollars. Um, but then if you if she needs exactly four strings then it's cheaper to buy the pack at twenty dollars instead of at store a um twenty four dollars but then again at store at string number five if you want five strings then in store b you have to pay forty dollars again but at store a you multiply that by six and you just need to pay thirty dollars for five strings but in store b if you want to buy five strings you have to buy eight strings right and that's going to cost you forty dollars so depending on which number you can compare each graph and find the specific points let me tell you when it's cheaper so it is cheaper to buy from store b if you are purchasing oh let me let me move this here You are purchasing four, seven, eight, eleven, twelve, or fourteen through twenty guitar strings. Okay. You can compare. You can compare the points on the graphs for the number of string and find which one has a lower price. Okay. 
There we go. All right. So store B, the graph of store B is something called a step function, and it's a part of piecewise defined function. So we'll, we'll, we have a question. We'll answer throughout this lesson this question. How do you model a situation in which a function behaves differently over different parts of its domain? So we're going to look at examples of piecewise defined functions in the next videos. See you in the next video. Bye.